Hello there. Welcome back to Print Shift. Today, special treat. Unboxing tiny belts and hopefully getting a print going on this machine. This is a tiny belt beta unit. I'm one of the beta testers. It's a little bit overdue on the video. I've had this machine for a bit. I don't know exactly what number beta I am, but Start with the working reason wheel. This guy came with my house. I believe it's a spoke shave. Alright. Oh, put my name on it. Disable the address so you guys can't track me down fully. There we go. Thank you, Adam. Powerbelt3D.com, number 21. In prep for this, I have the three official G codes that came with it, and I sliced one of my own to try and test the belt adhesion. So, hopefully, we can get this up and running. This should be fully assembled, or rather, 90% of something. Very nice printed parts. Nothing unexpected so far. I think we've been a bit of an issue of the 12 volt power supply. I'd like to see more powerful supply, but that's easy enough to change. And the only thing that makes a real difference for is the heated bed. On a printer this size, it's going to take some effort to get, rather take some time to get hot at 12 volts. Looks like some GT2 belt tensioners. I'll go on the end of that rod. We do have uh Pretty well packed, but it looks like part of the extruder broke here. What do you actually do? So that was attached. Oh, so it's multiple fractures there. Well, I'll try and see how important that is. The extruder is supposed to be attached down here. That print snapped clean off. Infill just looks... Hmm. Everybody seems to love the gyroid infill, I just haven't found it to be as strong as just making straight lines in terms of sheer strength, but who knows if that was the actual issue. Power supply is well attached, everything else... I'm gonna, hmm, I don't know if I should glue this on just to get test prints out. Yeah, maybe try that. Clearly, I need a little bit of repair work in the future. It is a rather large machine, and especially in the box with just bubble wrap. You'd think you'd need some foam bumpers around the edges to try and stabilize it. I'm guessing it was just rocked back and forth, and shippers are not known for their Gentle nature, natures. Alright, so. This is our extruder. Extruder arm. We do have end stops installed. Or rather, yes, hot end, not extruder. This is the extruder. We have the cable, presumably, for the extruder here. I can't see if this is in frame or not. Eh, that looks good. So first, we're going to stick on the 
belt driver. There's something else underneath here. Ah, the LCD screen. I'm going to flip this around. So, tiny belt, power belt, 3D. Okay. Where's the SFF? So, the arm. Attached with a very nice uh, bent steel plate. Should be nice and strong. I'm guessing we mount the end stop on top. So the extruder slides right on. Can we get you through there? Yeah, maybe not. Let me pull the belt out of the channel first. Slide that guy on. You see the belt mounts here. Slide him down. Yep. So this is going to be attached around the motor there. You'll slide the arm on. There's even a screw here as a backstop. I need some... Should have brought a couple tools. In terms of we have two zip ties. Tensioner for... Unless I'm missing something, we're actually missing one of the motors. Oh uh, no, we have two motors here, so that should have be installed. We're good. So this is the x-axis motor, the extruder, belt or z-axis. That's good. But let's get the belt axis installed. So I believe this part broke off here, and this is just another... I'm not sure where this piece actually came from. But my instinct is that's part of this guy. Oh yes, right here. Basically broke right along layer lines, weakest part. Printed well, but... Fairly important in terms of strain relief. If this is printing with this loose here, gonna wear out the uh, um, break the thermistor wires fairly quickly so that does need to be secured and there are nice slots for everything it's just did not quite survive the treatment from I don't know who shipped it UPS it's okay guys not a good way to secure that immediately So he looks like a three millimeter. There's a fair bit of play in the arm in terms of locking in place. So I'm actually going to see if I can find my uh, angle gauge and put this at the correct angle. It'd really be nice to have a Maybe even flip, fold this a second time to get a lip if you're at the right angle. Well, this is just a digital angle gauge. We will zero it on the bed. And then we're using this. I don't think there's any way I can get you guys to actually see that. So I'm going to secure this at 35 degrees exactly. Thirty-four point nine is uh, gonna be good enough. Yeah, it's just a quick little. 
relatively inexpensive, but I'd like to see a registration, even if it's just something printed along here, some sort of guide that you get the belt in at the correct angle. Belt tension is just first lock the belt in the channel. First adjust the drive gear so that the belt is aligned with the channel. There's a little wiggle in the arm that's due just to these guys. But we do have the correct a nice and essential feature. Put you guys in the camera. So you can see back here these are hexagons, these are offset nuts. So we can tighten these rollers. You can see I can easily roll this one with my fingers. He's not tight enough. This guy he could be tighter too. And we'll need, I think, a 12 millimeter wrench for that. Look, I tried a bunch, all right? That's more like it. I can still flex it because, of course, not going to get all the play out of the system, but that won't flex on its own now. Okay, so next thing, I'll be sure if the uh, well. We gotta put the. That's the z axis. It's the x axis that is broken clean off. How can we get that happy enough to do a quick print? We do have a lot of surface area, so. We'll... Yep. We're gonna try to super glue that in place. And we won't expect that to last forever, but we do have this STLs available and I can 3D print a new one. One thing when you're doing things on a belt printer, or rather with a belt printer, you really shouldn't work on top of the belt. It's... You know, try to Try to be good. We'll let that sit for a bit. More concerned with how I can handle getting these wires strain reliefed real quick. Mm -hmm. Looks like this piece was supposed to be installed that. Now yeah, with all the cables on the outside. Interesting that it's threaded in the part. Maybe it's just really tight. It doesn't seem like there was a reason you needed a nut on there. As long as we got the super glue out of mine as well. Glue that up, but. Well, no, I'm not gonna bother. I'll just reprint these. Walls are 
I mean, they're relatively thick parts, but one thing I notice, there's barely any gusseting. Like, this is a straight 90. Of course, it broke right off there. I'd like to see, like, a raised rib along the inside, just to give it some three-dimensional strength, and at least in this part, there's plenty of room to do so. So, maybe. And like for this, that's just a straight 90. Adding in a three or four millimeter chamfer, or even... GoPro seems a little unhappy, so hopefully we're still recording. I'm gonna take a trick from an old book. I was talking about the parts don't have much in the way of fillet or gussets. This guy has a little bit on there. Yeah, that one. I just want to reinforce this part because I'd really like to get a test print out on this machine. I'll just show off, you know. Quick update. Let me get a different kind of clamp. So that should hold fairly well once the glue dries. While we're waiting, we have the belt motor to install. There's Also have this piece, which looks like a copy of the hot end standoff. See if it comes in handy later. Again, with just adding some kind of stiffness to prevent this motor from weeble wobbling around, like that's just a large fin would be a really nice addition. Just to you really shouldn't need a lot of torque on that, but when the motor's kind of sticking out from the printer, I'm afraid it will get. Well, I'm afraid this would happen basically. Okay, so. I do notice a problem with the extruder already, but it looks like it was my problem. So the extruder goes on this side, not the side I put it on. My mistake. Let's swap that out before I forget about it. I always use the end, or the wheel to actuate the end stop, but he's actually using the carriage, which is probably a better design. But. In any case, on this side, the carriage would run into the power supply. So we turn it around, it won't run into anything. Uh, but it won't fit around the belt tensioner either. Very nice. So that's going to be on the other side too. Nice detail with nylon lock nuts on things. On most things, so it won't work its way loose on all these guys. Just make sure you dress your belts. They all have to be lined up nicely for this tensioner to work. There's not a lot of room in the channel for these, but it is lined up correctly. It's more of a just do be careful on the install. The belt is rubbing on something or is like half out of the channel you'll have a lot of problems and then when they work themselves out you might have a frayed belt or insufficient tension yeah. and i'm just tensioning this by feel um, 
been 3D printing for kind of a while. Sort of not ideal, but if we're being honest, it's okay. And for now, I'm going to just cure the hot end wires to the hot end itself, just because I want to get it going. This is how we used to do it before 3D printers were super reliable. But Adam had the right idea with the having a nice 3D printed part. It's just the whole part is kind of 2D, adding a couple corner braces, shore that up, prevent the kind of breakage. Alright, so other things to install, we have the LCD. Which has just the... So this is a graphical LCD, it can also be used in Marlin mode. But in graphical, all it's doing is sending G-codes over a um, serial port. Some people have a strong preference. Never really worried about it. In terms of this part, like there's plenty of space you could add a proper gusset so it's not hanging on just that bracket, but it should be strong enough. With a nice touch. I always point out the nice touches. Me. Mm. Not quite. I'm endeavoring to not move the camera too much, but. How about 3D? Tango Beta number 21. Loosen the front off. Also doesn't appear to be any sort of belt tensioning system. Pulling this in place. This rod is not even quite reaching to the ends of the bearings. It's it's lodged in there now, but really like to see the rod a little bit longer or some sort of way to capture it in there. Really, as long as the belt is even remotely straight, you're not going to have tracking issues and it shouldn't pull the rod out, but the whole idea of the belt printer is that you can print over and over and over again. So even a small error is going to end up biting you in the end. I wonder if we're going to shoot with the belt. Also it looks like the belt is right in line. mount is broken as well. And even here there's barely a millimeter difference between where the top of the roller and the belt. Yeah. Well, this did not survive shipping terribly well. I think had a fun idea for increasing tension underneath it. Not all is lost. Well, it's just to understand that the belt is not nearly as good a shape as you'd like. I'd like to see this hand raised up a bit. I'm going to lift up the back end of this. I 
there should really be a clear line demarking where the belt is failed. I might usually do a fairly decent slope so that there's a gradual peel area too. That's as much spring force as the spring has. Okay there, but with well, the bed held on by springs, you're never going to get all that great tension on it in the first place. Wonder if it's move the belt out of the way or move the bed below the belt, set your belt tension, and then the springs pushing up would give you some bit of belt tension. Also a fairly thin heated bed, three millimeter maybe. <laughs> and the cord won't quite reach my outlet. But let's get the rest of it up. I've been working on conveyor belts and tooling one that's roughly this size, but I erred on the side of being quite robust. Trying to think of ways to put a little more tension on the belt. We're running out of options in terms of ideas. These are a little too big. You just put a big pool of marbles underneath. But I do have a bunch of steel rods. having a little extra weight and the ability to pull down and smooth out the belt should help a little bit. Better options to down here so that the motion of the belt will keep the rods in place. There's still a lot of pillowing on the bottom here. Well, let us turn it on. I'm mildly miffed the cord is just a tiny bit too short for my shop outlet. Certainly not a tiny belt problem, but you know. So it appears I seriously took this off and reinstalled it on the wrong side again. Did I tell you I'm really good at this? Seriously. Baffled. 
It is evening. Not really a long day though or anything, just... You're gonna want to put this on the correct side. The first, or the second time. And you know what? If you have to, you can put it on the correct side the third time. Alright, so, SD card, it's powered on, you guys can see sorta. Let's move you guys up to the front here. Does get so This is one of the included G-code files. 20-10 square pet G. I have not done any homing. I'm basically going to babysit the printer for the first print. In terms of actually stupid these at this time. But I'm there trying to roll out that way. But basically, running the first print will make sure that the temperature and the bed are working. Bed being 12 volt, I'm gonna drop that temperature down. Good. Drop it down to 40 just so we get it started. And then we check the end stops and check the positioning. This should be. Well, this machine should have printed before, but I can't imagine that deconstructing and reconstructing and gluing parts back together left it perfectly calibrated, so. Looks like the calibration for the belt height. Yeah, the X position barely matters. There's no end stop on the uh, belt itself. It's the only real thing to adjust would be the um, distance from the nozzle to the bed itself, set by here. And that's just a single uh, jiggle it back and forth. It would be nice to have a screw or something where you could do more easily do more fine adjustment. But, what I'm talking about. So in order to adjust the distance between the nozzle and the bed, be that guy. Do a... How close are we? And we're not very close. We're not actually able to trigger the end stop with the nozzle, so... I'm going to adjust that while we're heating. And it's real tricky to get that adjusted correctly. I want it to click right when the nozzle is touching the bed. I feel like it's a little too far away, but too far is usually better than too close. We're still waiting for the bed. Oh, uh, wait, not let me change the... There we go. It's one trick to getting your bed to heat up faster is to stick something on it. Reduce the heat loss. I'm not even gonna let her buck until I find something to cover it up. Maybe I'll put the camera not actually on the printer so I can be adjusted. Bed is at 41, hot end is at 209, 210. So hot end is reading them just fast enough. Bed is going to be a little iffy. Got the nice print cooling blower right up front. And the hot end fan is working beautifully. Hot end is well mounted with this guy, all those curves in there. So there's enough meat on it that that's nice and strong. I think this wire should be tucked in a little bit. Hot end is hot, the bed is heating. And look at that, we're just touching the belt with the nozzle. That is beautiful. I did not feed any filament in because really just checking out, but 
that looks good enough that I'm going to start feeding filament. One of the unsung praises of the belt printer is that as long as you're doing a simple object that touches the belt every layer, you can just feed filament in whenever you feel like it. There's no need to stop and restart the print. We'll just be missing the first dozen or two layers. Yeah? Are you gonna cover for me? You got this, buddy. You got this. So, a lot of problems with shipping, and I'm a little worried about the belt tension and applying more to it, but Tiny Belt Beta, number 21, is up and printing. It survived. In terms of how do you fix shipping, this machine, it wasn't braced against the side of the box. It was able to shift around. So I would say some hard foam pieces up against the extrusion would locate it in the box and make sure that none of the sensitive parts hit the sides. It's, I mean, it's unfortunate of when you're building a square frame printer, the easy things to damage are going to be sticking out. I might recommend just taking the parts that broke off and not having them go during shipping. This one, I don't, I don't know what happened to it. it. Looked like it was well packed. This guy shipped attached and just, yeah. But I am going to switch to time lapse and let's get this guy print out. Very first print off the tiny belt. Parts that were printed with filament. Very nice. Good motion smoothness. This is where there was no filament in the machine and it recovered beautifully because that's how belt printers do. We're gonna leave that there for now. Tiny belt number 21 up and printing. It needs a little TLC. I'm gonna reprint some parts, recover from the shipping damage, then see about how well we can do tensioning the belt. I'll do a more focused review on how well it prints in a little while. Till then, makers, thanks for watching. Happy printing.